Hey guys, we're getting into fracture treatments. This first one, I'm probably going to talk about reduction. Mm, I think I'm going to start with just reduction and then I'll do a separate video for um, traction and fixation, um, et cetera. And then immobilization will get its own video. That's kind of cool, right? Um, fractures, I mean, out of other things that I have to teach is better than it's kind of um, it's kind of interesting and cool and has some a lot of parts to it. So I'm um, hopefully you're having fun with me here. Let's get into this. I'm not going to show you this video, but it just shows what a closed reduction is. I have pictures here. Oh, oh my goodness. No, thank you, Jesus. All right, hold on a sec. All right. Anyway, as I was trying to say, a reduction, hopefully it doesn't start playing a video or something crazy. Um, a reduction is uh, something that is done. Because remember, I told you there's kind of two parts to the treatment. There's the um, uh, we're trying to align it early on and then we want to immobilize it so that it can heal. So reduction is a part of the alignment process. And what a reduction is, um, there's two types. Just like there's two types of fractures, there's an open and closed fracture. And just to remind you, open fracture means skin is open, closed fracture means skin is closed. This open and closed is a little different, but it's gonna make sense. So a reduction, remember we're reducing or aligning bones back into place. So a doctor can do either a closed reduction or an open reduction. A closed reduction um, is going to be what's in this picture. And if you, you can also, like I said, I had a video on the slide before that kind of visualizes this better. If you're a visual person, you might want to watch a video of this. Um, but effectively what they're doing is a wonderful orthopedic doctor or resident will come to your bedside, if, especially if you work ER, and they're going to actually um, mechanically with their body force a joint back into alignment. So uh, like a joint that's out of place, they're going to, without going to surgery, push a bone back into place. Now you're probably wondering how is the patient going to tolerate this? Um, they're usually under local or general anesthesia. When I've seen one done in the ER at my hospital, um, they put them under ketamine. Um, they also sometimes can just give local if it's just like the wrist, like you'll see in the video that I had on the page before. Um, they'll sometimes do like just like a local injection of like lidocaine. Um, and then what they're doing is they're applying pressure in different ways. Like sometimes like they're holding, like they might even sometimes need two people and they're pretty much trying to literally push the bone back into straight alignment. Um, and this helps because remember the sooner we can get things back into alignment, the less complications and the sooner it can start healing. Now, uh, this closed reduction sometimes is enough where this is all they have to do is they just, you know, kind of, um, push like, cause you kind of see how he's pushing and pulling like this. Um, you know, um, they kind of do this and then the bones back in place. Now, usually in order to verify the bones back in place, this is done under like x-ray guidance, like what we call fluoroscopy, or, um, most of the time what happens is they do it and then they get a snap a picture to make sure they actually did get the joint back into place. Um, this can also happen if you, um, they do this, like for people that pop their shoulders out of, um, you know, out of socket or their hip out of socket, they, this is like a reduction to get it back in. Um, so if you've ever seen, had or had or seen someone uh, need that as well. Um, but like I said, so usually they do this and um, it's either pop back into place, but usually still we apply something. We'll talk about traction or we try, uh, we apply um, casts, splints or braces to help immobilize or maintain that alignment longer term afterward. It's not that it has to be forever, but just because we're popping it or putting it back into place doesn't mean that it's fixed. It usually still requires some more intervention. So closed reduction is a lot of times it's not everyone gets one of these, not it does, doesn't work for every type of fracture, but for some fractures, they want to start aligning it early. So they do this closed reduction. So effectively think closed, they're, um, you know, realigning that it's closed because they don't have to cut the patient open. They're not going inside the patient in order to fix or reduce the fracture. Um, they are just um, externally um, moving the joint back into place and taking pictures to see that it's back in place. And then after this, they may end up doing what's called an open reduction. So an open reduction is they are opening the patient. And usually the, um, the acronym you're going to hear here is what's called an ORIF or an open reduction internal fixation. Um, and this is a surgical repair where they're going in and they are, um, instead of, you know, and again, they could sometimes have the closed reduction first and then have this done, or they can just have this done, just depending on the patient. They're going in and they're using wires, pins, screws, plates, rods, nails, just depends on, they don't necessarily are using all of them. They might only use one of those, um, but they're using um, devices to fix the bone into place. So, you know, sometimes they start with the closed reduction because they want to get alignment early, but then we need to do more. There's more alignment that needs, um, or maybe someone doesn't qualify for a close, like their bones, like they're like just kind of a bunch of little pieces. So they need to go in and do something more surgically. Um, so, um, 
that's what an internal fixation is. It's more of a long-term fix, but it's also more invasive because we're opening the patient up. So there's high risk for infection. So um, tetanus prophylaxis for those that have not been, um, that were unsure of their vaccine status or that are not up to date, um, the patient's most likely going to need antibiotics. Um, but the open approach does allow them to really get to the bottom of the problem earlier. So um, it facilitates early ambulation, which is always a good thing. Um, so effectively closed reduction, um, it's just a non-surgical at the bedside, um, moving of the joint back into alignment under sedation or local anesthetic, um, you know, just depending on where the, you know, problem is. Um, and um, that sometimes just helps to allow for early alignment so then we can immobilize and treat. Or uh, there's also an open um, reduction where we're actually opening the patient up and reducing or again aligning their bones surgically and this is all the doctor that's doing both of these um, and um, helping to more long-term align or get things fixated in place the way that we wanted so that things can heal but the overall picture here is is that we are getting things in alignment so they can heal appropriately so this is a picture this is like an original here on the left is the original fracture and then, then they went inside they did an open reduction internal fixation. So they open this patient up and you can see they put in these um, rods and nails and um, fixed both parts of this bone so that it can be in a position where it can actually heal. So this is kind of a before and after. So um, if I have a patient that goes for an open reduction internal fixation, what is my role as the nurse? As the nurse, I need to watch the neurovascular status closely because remember they're going to be at risk for Fed embolism syndrome, but also even if they are, um, you know, if that's not as concern, you always want to see how their blood flow is because they just had a major procedure. Um, they're going to be at risk for edema and other um, vascular compromise. We're going to assess for drainage from the surgical site, or um, if there is any drains, we want to see how much are they draining? What's the quality? Is it changing? Um, and then a lot of the other stuff that we talked about, preventing complications after surgery, um, increasing their activity. These patients are um, high risk for constipation, high risk for um, kidney stones. So good fluid intake um, to prevent constipation. We start with least invasive first. So fluid and fiber incentive spirometer to prevent them from being as at risk for atelectasis and pneumonia, um, preventing blood clots through VTE prophylaxis as ordered or prescribed. Um, and then as the nurse, I just need to know what their activity restrictions or mobility orders are. So maybe they had a fracture before the surgery, they were, you know, strict bed rest. Um, but now, you know, they're uh, allowed to get up after they've had their fracture repaired. But how, like, how much pressure can they put on their um, joint? So usually, I think I have this on a later slide, where we talk about there's like different levels of mobility, um, like there's toe touch, partial weight bearing, full weight bearing, so that you just want to know what your patient's status is, um, how much they're allowed to um, move. And then just because of the meds, the bed rest, and um, the nature of a lot of fractures, um, they can be at risk for orthostatic hypotension or getting dizzy, lightheaded with position changes. So have them change positions slowly. Um, and then do all the stuff for safety too, you know, make sure that they, um, you're using a gait belt, getting extra help, um, not straining yourself, doing all that stuff to prevent yourself from getting acute back pain. Um, so that you can long-term take care of patients. Anyway, I think that's it for this section. All right, the next video will be on traction. See you there.